Hey, good morning, everyone. Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, uh, today we're going to go ahead and pull my son-in-law as well while he's getting everything ready, getting a well casing ca uh, cap off and everything. I uh, will just give you a quick overview of that little rig. What we got for a power unit is a uh, rigid, a rigid 700 machine. This is a pawn shop purchase. I gave fifty dollars for this, and I had to turn around and through rigid through one of the supply houses. I had to buy a one-inch square drive adapter. <laughs> that was kind of odd because it cost me fifty-two dollars just for that adapter alone. This thing only turns 32 revolutions a minute. The very first weld that we pulled was very slow and tedious because of the low RPM. And so I come up with the uh, jack shaft to increase the output ratio three to one. So we turn this now at 96 revolutions per minute on that input shaft up there, which is the input shaft to the little half ton bolt winch, which was also a pawn shop purchase. But down there about four foot is a casing collar or a bulkhead fitting. And it's gonna have a one inch female pipe thread up at the top so that we can hook onto it to pull it off of the uh, O-ring sealed connection where it slides into the side of the well casing. This is your O-ring sealed brass fitting that actually slides into that wedge on the side of the, uh, the casing. And here's what you tie that sharp piece of pipe into in order to pull it out. Tractorverse. I thought I'd bring you out here for a different look on the whole process. There's the rig. It's got to be able to pull it up to 20 feet. I'm sure he'll talk about all that. Taller than that. I personally love the bowling ball on there. Give it some weight. Okay, we're pulling that pipe out. We got everybody out here. He's got the missus. That's my mama. And that's my husband. Welcome to my house. Thank you for coming along on this adventure. We desperately need water back again. Kind of a funny anecdote on my side. I was telling my husband, every time I open the fridge, I'm a little surprised that uh, the light comes on. Because generally out here in the country, or the sticks, or whatever you want to call it, Generally, whenever we lose water, we've also lost power, so that's a little odd to me that we still have electric and everything, but no water anywhere. You definitely uh, realize how important water is whenever you can't just go and how thankful you are that you can just turn on the faucet and water comes out. Okay, the gush of water there. He hates this part. pipes come out kind of grody and nasty and they're going to wipe those down bring it down and put it on the pile here I'm out here stretching out the wire I don't think I can get you a good shot of that because 400 uh, some odd feet of wire takes up a lot of space so I'm making sure that it doesn't get twisted up or kinked up and that we'll be able to have it go back in um, with the pipe when we send the new pump back down um, that it goes down nice and smooth so I stole the camera for a couple minutes to get a different outlook. 
to try to show you it from uh, my point of view over here. Hooking back onto the new one. I don't know if you can see that. Um, like chalk block, I don't know what the technical name is for it, that holds it there from slipping down into the well so that we don't drop it. That would be bad to say the least. And then we repeat the process. We're about done, so I'm gonna put you back where you need to be, so I'm sure he's gonna to wanna to film the pump coming out. We got to the pipe we're waiting on, number 20. Had the pump hooked to it, and now they're disconnecting the wires. A lot, a lot of sediment, silt. You would think pulling a well would be clean. You know, lots of water. PVC pipe makes it easier than when they had the old galvanized pipes. They had to be really careful with keeping the wires away from the pipes because it would the electricity would cause the pipe to have holes in it. It would basically burn through the pipe. Once you lost that, you got a hole in the pipe, you lost suction on your pump. I think they called it electrolysis. So the PVC actually is a better pipe. It's more bendable, lighter weight, lasts longer. Okay, so I'm back here narrating something that I really know nothing about. That's a submersible pump there, and they're taking it off, taking it, disconnecting it from the pipe. They're about to get it loosened, I think. How long has this been in the ground? 25 years. 25 years, okay. You don't realize how much you miss water, running water in your house until you don't have it. All right, this is probably the exciting part that's over for a while, and then it will be the exciting part where we put it back in. So see, if your well goes out and you happen to have a well rig like this just laying around, you can pull your well yourself. Most people call a company and have their well pulled. But as you can see, we are not most people. This is probably some of the best conditions we've ever pulled a well. It's overcast, the sun's not beating down on us, it's not raining, there's no snow on the ground. It's not 97 degrees in the shade. These are the usual conditions, not all at once, but. Or snow. That's what I said, snow on the ground, we've done that. The night before I'm supposed to go out of town for a week training for us. That was grounds for divorce if you left me with no water. We only had three kids back then. <laughs> That's all we ever had was three kids. What is this bloaty thing at the end of the pump? I mean, at the end of that pipe down there. The bloaty thing? Oh, well, that's a, uh, it's a shock absorber, essentially. What shock does it absorb? It, well, every time the pump motor starts, it starts in a clockwise direction, which wants to tighten all your fittings all the way from bottom to top. Okay, so that just minimizes the amount of throw oh. or rotation that the pipe's gonna exert, be exerted to, and it keeps it from hammering or flipping back and forth inside the pipe with the starting torque of the motor. Huh. Okay, thank you. Is that what those other little disky things do too? They kind of do the same thing, but they're actually wire standoffs. Wire standoffs, okay. You hear me talking about amalgamating tape? Well, this is what this is right here. It's a waterproof tape. And what it does, whenever you put the multiple layers on as you stretch it during the application, it sets off a chemical reaction or whatever it is that actually causes all the thicknesses of the material to bond into one solid piece of rubber. So this is the old connections around the old wires that we actually took off. And you can see it's bonded into uh, those multiple layers. It's just one thick, solid piece of rubber for waterproofing. But we're replacing it with some uh, heat shrink. Okay, here we go. There's Mike, and he's doing something else. It's called heat shrink, and they put that on the wires, and then they heat it up, and it shrinks around it and makes it waterproof. So, I'm not going to use the black amalgamated tape. They're using this. They've got all kinds of cool things now. Okay, there, I just wanted to show you how pretty that is, and it's almost ready to go back in. We've got those wires all wrapped up nice and tight. Waterproof, what a good job.
Okay, so it was bye bye Bertha. She is down past vision and they will now put the other pipe back in. Um, they'll wrap tape about midsection of each one of them. And we'll just keep us doing that until we run out of pipe again. This one left, and we're halfway there. Well guys, I guess you can tell we've done this quite a number of times before. We've got it, uh, we've got it down to a, a pretty well working machine, I guess you want to call it. But now with the help of the missus, my daughter, my son-in-law, and of course a bunch of old rusty stuff, we managed to get her done without a hitch. So now I'm showing my son-in-law all the process he has to go through to disassemble this, if sometimes he have to, I have to use it uh, with my son whenever I'm out of town. So. We'll just fast forward to this and be done with it. We'll be out of here in no time. Well guys, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. It's disassembled and it's ready to transport to the next job. Of course, I wish there's to be never a next job. But at any rate, this is Tractor Man 44 and my son-in-law. 
and we're out of here. The lady's already left.